Okay guys, we're back. Um, we're going to continue on with our little load now that's slotting attachment. Um, as we left off last time, we'd uh, we'd manufactured the, the slide, and we've got that fitting into place, and that's sliding quite comfortably now. Um, we now need to mount the back uh, into the back of this. We need to uh, mount a nut that we can adjust up and down to uh, set our centre height for our lathe and also to be able to uh, side cut to open up keyway widths. So uh, we've got a bit of um, off cut that we use from the, uh, the actual slide plate itself that I'm going to use to make the nut up and it's a fairly straightforward job. Um, one change I have made on my drawing is uh, I have a 10mm by 1mm pitch thread. Um, I'm actually going to make that a left hand thread so I've, I've uh, ordered some taps before Christmas and they've come in so we'll um, We'll use those so that the orientation is right for uh, for our lathe, the way we work our, our saddle and our top slide. Um, screwing it down is going to screw it down. Screwing it up is going to screw it up. So uh, just nice to have that orientation, the same as what we'd use with, uh, with our machinery, with the left hand threads. So uh, I'll get this cut back to size, um, leave it a little bit to, uh, to machine up, and uh, we'll have a quick look at the drawing and uh, what we're actually doing. Alright, see you soon guys. Alright guys, let's have a quick look at this uh, this block we're going to knock up. So, um, cut a bit of 20mm flat um, back to size. Um, overall height is 24mm. Overall width is 36mm. That's a, uh, a, uh, a fitment uh, into a slot that we're going to cut into the back of that sliding plate. Um, we've got an M10 thread in here, as I said, I've, uh, I've done that as a left hand, so that's an M10 by 1mm pitch, left hand fine. Um, bit of a step to machine in here, and some holes to drill and tap. Um, I've got some 45s on here just to clear the um, the radius that we're going to put in the bottom of that um, slot that we're going to machine into the, uh, into the slide plate, but what I may do is just drop those radiuses down a little bit in that slide plate, um, and allow us to make that square. We'll see how it pans out anyway. I'll leave it square for the time being and we'll see what happens. So no great rocket science in this. So that's our little bit of stock. That's what we're going with. It's it's funny, I, I pick up bits of stock and um, back in the mid 80s, I, I, uh, I was doing design work in a steel mill and one of the jobs that we had to do apart from doing a, a machine design was to uh, do the uh, design work for the, the rolls on the rolling mill. And uh, that was to design the shape to, to break the uh, billet down uh, into its various sizes that, uh, that we needed. And we did flats, we did angles, we did odd leg angles, and we did um, reinforcing bar. And I'll have to look at the sides here to see if there's any rolled in laps. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the jobs, uh, part of the design, is you had a percentage breakdown from uh, mill to mill. We had 16 stands, um, ranging from stand one down to stand 16, which was a, a twin stand. And uh, yeah, it's funny when you look back on your past and you think about what you did. And uh, we used, well, they were called planner meters then. We used to uh, profile around. Everything was done on tracing paper and ink. We used to profile around, uh, work out what the percentages are. We'd have to give um, coordinate points at every intersectional change. Um, uh, those drawings would then go upstairs to, uh, to be programmed on the punch tape and uh, under the very old CNC machines that then would machine the, the roll shapes out. So I can remember watching blokes, and it was a fairly dangerous place back then. They, they, they had a death, and a, a bloke had lost both his legs at one stage in the time that I was there, which was nearly four years. Um, we had guide boxes and, and twister boxes that would uh, work the material down and guide it into the bite uh, of each of the, uh, the roll shapes. And uh, sometimes they'd rub on the side of the guides, and uh, it was very hard to pick it up. And I, I actually watched operators there watching this red hot strip coming down at their heads looking at where it's rubbing into the guides and uh, just pull their heads back at the last minute as the strip went flying past and they go up with a sledgehammer and uh, straddle the uh, the guide box with this uh, red hot ribbon running underneath it and just gently tap away at the guide box <laughs> and uh, it's uh, yeah it was uh, it was an eye opener I can tell you an absolute eye opener um, very rough and tumble industry to work in back then. But uh, yeah, I pick up bits of, uh, bits of stock and uh, just have a look and see if there's any rolled in laps or if it uh, hasn't quite met the, uh, 
the area requirements and uh, hasn't quite filled the void up. You'll have to see that with the radius there where it's uh, a little bit of an off radius or where it hasn't quite uh, quite filled um, as it's gone through the uh, gone through the shape rolls. Anyway, that was a world away. Um, all right, uh, we'll get set up in the milling machine and we'll, we'll start knocking this off to uh, off to size. So um, it's 20 mil, we'll knock it back to 15 mil. Uh, we'll knock the width back and uh, we'll knock the height back as well and get that back uh, to spec. And then we'll machine the slots, we'll machine the grooves out of here. Then we'll set it up and then we'll drill and tap it and then we'll, uh, we'll do the drill and tapping for the mounting holes. And that'll give us a gauge to be able to uh, use to do the machining in the back of our slide plate to be able to slip that nut into place. So uh, we'll get set up and do that now, and uh, we'll see you shortly. Well, as I said, we'll just uh, we'll just rough this out to start with. So going from right to left gives me the best surface finish there. Right, we'll flip it over, we'll, uh, we'll machine this back to thickness, which is the, the 24, and we'll start doing the other sides. Okay, we'll knock this back to, uh, to 24 mil in thickness. So we're about just over 26 thick at the moment, so we'll knock 2 mil off to measure it and uh, do our final sizing. Um, this isn't a critical dimension, this one here. Um, the width is obviously going to be a sized fit, so we'll be a bit more careful with that one. So. I'll get this knocked down. Twenty-four point four. Alright, so point four to come off. Twenty-four bang on. Right, we'll set up and do the uh, the uh, size finish on the, on these edges now. Right, we'll square this up in the in the vise now. I've just got my little tiny little uh, two and a half inch square, and I use this for all sorts of little things, getting little tight spaces to get things squared up. So I've got the light in behind us here. We've got quite a big gap in there. Right, so I'll put that smaller parallel in there. And the easiest way for me to do these ones is just have a little bit of light grip on the jaw and a big gap at the top and just roll it in until it kisses, which is right there. And we'll get up and down. And that's pretty good. Right, we'll just take a lick off this, and that'll give us more to take off on that rolled side to uh, roll side to uh, to get that cleaned up. Oh, 
lovely. We'll flip that over and we'll bring that back to size. Right out of the thickness on that, this is about 41, so I've got about 5 mil to take off this. It's a tad over 41 actually. Just measure that for depth. Right, 36.11. that up and that's pretty much being on 36 all right so we'll, uh, we'll knock the width off or we'll thickness off I should say we'll get that down to 15 mil and then we'll start cutting those little slots and uh, get ready to drill and tap it Righto guys, we'll, we'll knock this off to uh, thickness, so it's got to come down to 15mm from about 20 so I'll take 4mm uh, off this side, flip it over and we'll take the, uh, the final amount off the other side and then we'll start looking at cutting the grooves. Okay, we'll deboo that, flip it over and bring it down to thickness. Well, I've got about 1.3 to take off this, so I'll take off a mil, I'll measure it and do our final cut. Fifteen point two nine. Point two eight. Two eight. So 0.28 to come off. Not a critical dimension. This one. It's not a, uh, a working dimension. Cut the uh, steps in this. Oh, Jesus. 
I reckon we'll just get it by about half a mil. All right, so what I'll do is I'll set up a cardboard end mill in here. We'll start cutting the the, uh, the slots into it. And uh, it's got to go this way, obviously. Get the slots cut into it. And uh, we'll get set up for, uh, for drilling and tapping that, uh, that left-hand thread. All right, we'll bring you back uh, when we've got uh, the tooling changed out. All right, guys, so um, I've just used an edge finder just to pick up the edges and then find the center. I've come back 15.1, uh, so looking at a 11 mil land in here, 14 mil um, across, and then another 11 mil obviously to keep it central. So um, I've come across 15.1 just to take up any eccentricity that may be in the cutter. So we'll do 15.1 on either side, then we'll measure it and see where we're at, and we'll take the final bit off. Not a critical dimension, this. Um, it's not a working dimension at all. It's uh, basically 14 across the top there, so we'll see where we come in anyway. And we've got to come down six mil, so I'm just going to be careful. I, uh, I don't actually hit my jaws. Let's see how we go anyway. Let's see where that's going to sit. I'm looking for 14. Alright, oh, it's 14.12. I might do that with the mic. A little bit easier. I'll, uh, I'll clean the booze up on this, then we'll, we'll mic it up and see where we're sitting. Right, so I've marked it up at um, 0.15 oversize, and uh, here we cut our uh, each side around about 0.7 of a mil oversize, so that, that cut is cutting pretty true. So we'll, uh, we'll bring that back and do its, uh, its final cut. Yep, I'm going to leave it at that. All right, that's going quite well. Right, while well, we've got it sitting in the vise, we've got the center. I just used the edge finder, picked up the edge of the jaw here, and centered it out. So we've got to come down six, then come twelve, come across <coughs> uh, twenty-eight, center pop, and then come up twelve again. Um, and these are going to be drilled and tapped out at um, five mil in fives. So we'll just get these center drills done first, and then we'll set up for the tapping. Tapping size drill.
episode done. I'll set up a tap them while they're uh, captured in the vise. Then we'll flip it over and we'll clock it up and um, do the uh, M10 left hand uh, link flows into this block. So we'll get set up for uh, quickly tapping that. Right, just tapping the last hole out now. I was using these little spiral taps that I, uh, I kept going on about and um, I heard a little snap and uh, I've taken off a few of the cutting threads down the bottom there. So I'll go with my little standard one here. The tapping size on this was, or the pilot hole was uh, 4.2, which is the number of drill I used. And uh, see what the taps are tight in it. I might have been better off going a few thou up on that. That may have been a reason why it uh, snapped a couple of the cutting threads off it. I'll just take it real easy with this one. Oh, it's going through now. Oh, I think that's the bane of any machinist's life is cutting taps, and tapping holes out. It's so easy to snap the blast of things in there, and then you're in a world of pain trying to get them out, or you throw away the part and start again. All right. Hang on to the last. Right, I'll um, I'll flip this over. We'll, uh, we'll clock it up and uh, we'll get ready to cut that uh, M10 um, by one mil pitch left hand thread in there. All right, back in a tick. All right, so we've uh, we found the center of this. We've plumbed this up, so I've I've uh, used the edge finder to come off either edge and center it, and then uh, I've used this as the datum face. Because this will be the face that'll be bolting up to when it gets onto that um, onto that slide plate. I've used that as a datum, so no matter how I, no matter how I've machined this, as long as I use the same datums on the slide plate, I'll have this in central. Uh, I'll get this centralised when I go to drill through and then ream out or bore out for that um, for that top spreader bridge um, that we're going to be um, putting the uh, the screw into. So uh, it's important that you set up your datums and you know what your datums are or you think ahead about how you're going to set this up for the next the next job or, or set the datums up for the next job. So uh, we'll send a drill this um, and we'll, uh, we'll tap through for a, uh, I've got to look it up in the chart actually to find out what uh, an N10 by 1 mil pitch uh, tapping drill is but we'll get the, uh, we'll the centre done first. the chart it's a uh, nine mil drill so just measure that and that is bang on nine mil through that. All right, we'll set up with the, uh, with the left hand taps and we'll see how we go. Tapping wrench that I can uh, I can pick a center up with. So let's just drop him down. And I've got to remember it's a left-hand thread, so I have to do it the opposite way. 
Ten a sec, my little boy is yelling out for me. Open it. Yes, Danny. Probably embarrassed. Alright, let's uh, make sure that we are going to do this the right way. As I said, it's a left hand thread. I've got these left hand taps out of the UK. They're made in Germany, but see how we go. I tell it, they feel nice. It's amazing how quickly you can get things. I remember my father when he was building uh, the Evening Star, the uh, 210 logo, and getting parts and bits and pieces and tooling out from Reeves. He used to, back in the 60s and 70s, it was all done by post. So you go through their catalogue and you'd, uh, post off a request to get funding put into your account, and then you'd uh, place your order and uh, it was always by sea freight, so you sort of had to wait three months plus to get it on on shore. So, you know, from when you actually looked at what you wanted, it could be four or five months before you actually, it actually arrived at your house, at your door. These days, and I think this took, you know, the time place the order and got it in, it was, it was around two weeks. Absolutely amazing, compared to uh, what it used to be like. I remember a while ago looking at some correspondence that my father had kept, that his father had from I think it was around about 1928 with Myford over in England and uh, the headstock was warped and there was a certain batch that came out with the headstocks warped and all the correspondence to, uh, to get reparations so that you get a new headstock out and from date to date it was almost 12 months before it finally got resolved and you got a new headstock out from the UK to replace the one that was warped. You tried everything, well, looking at the letters that I'd, I'd gone through with the correspondent, they tried everything to try and get this thing running true, and it just wouldn't happen. And uh, it came out that he had, didn't have the, he wasn't the only one who had the same problem. There was a batch that had come out where the, uh, where the headstocks were a bit so um, I've been. So, these days. And uh, it was all very cordial, the way that it was written. And... Uh, very sorrowful and couldn't do enough uh, from the Monifer side of it. It was a bit different these days when you, particularly with some of the Chinese stuff you get out here, trying to, if you buy a lathe and uh, it's a bit crook, sometimes you can go through all sorts of pain to, to try and get your money back or get it replaced. The way these taps were designed, that one that we just put through is called a ring tap. It's got a little ring cut on it. It is slightly undersized to what we need. Unlike the taper taps that we get, and you can run them through and they're fine. This one here is done as a set. And you can actually feel this one cutting. So I've never come across these before. You can hear that cutting there. Just cuts it out to the final. And that's it. Beautiful. Now, this is a fairly fine thread and it's it's not a, a you know in terms of not a big thread, it's not designed to take any load, it's just designed to uh, screw that that uh, slide plate up and down to centralise it and then that gets locked in place on the uh, on the dovetails. Uh, with that slot and just a couple of grub screws up inside and we lock that in place so this isn't actually carrying any load um, other than uh, adjusting so it'll be adjusted to center height and then as i said you might adjust it once or twice to to do some side cutting so um if we can get away with a slightly finer thread all right well, i'll take that out i'll tap it all the way through and uh that one's done and we'll set up next for the uh the slide plate and um, we'll cut out the, uh, the um, grooves to get this uh, set into place. All right, I'll see you then.